Hello, and welcome to another Friday reading vlog from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. First thing to address, I've just formatted my camera, aka deleted everything from it, and in which I've deleted my answers from the question and answer video I filmed last weekend. Why? Even as I was deleting it, I was thinking, I'm not even dressed yet, even as I was deleting it, I was thinking, there's nothing on here that I need, is there? No, it's all, it's all stuff from the um, Easter vlog. <sighs> Lol. Um, it's half past eight on Friday morning, I'm not in bed reading because I'm going to get my hair done. And the reason I'm putting fitness clothes on, I say fitness clothes, I mean leggings <laughs> and a t-shirt, is that I am going to run to the hairdressers. You may well remember during lockdown, I did Couch to 5K. Do you remember that? Which is a wonderful program that teaches you to run 5K or for 30 minutes in, I forgot how much I enjoy the thumb holes in this, in, um, nine weeks and I'd like to do a bit of exercise which is what's happening here so I did the first one on Thursday when I was off work no that's not true Wednesday when I was off work and I'm just trying to keep it up and I've got to go I've got to run to the hairdressers anyway because David's out with a car it's tipping it down <laughs> so the, the quicker I get there the better I suppose and the only thing I can hope is that my mother will want to come and collect me from the hairdressers afterwards so that I don't ruin my lovely new hair. Because I tell you, I need lovely new hair. Look at these roots. So, I'm off now to do the run. When I come back, not only will I feel adrenalised because I've done a run, I'll also feel adrenalised hopefully because my hair's lovely and new. No, I can't have that little scraggy ponytail hanging out. And then I'll talk to you about the books I'm reading, the plans for the weekend, etc etc at which point will i be over the fact that i've deleted that video hopefully <laughs> i can't believe i've deleted it that's the second time i've done that in recent weeks what a fool what a fool anyway we move we go oh daffy you've got something exciting coming today you've got some raw food coming today so yeah anyway it's 25 to 9 and I wanted to do a, a half hour's run before I got to the hairdressers. So really, I should have left five minutes ago. Let's put the socks on and go. Oh hi, I've got a fringe now. I feel like when I get a fringe, I mean I haven't had one for many, many years. I didn't have one the whole time I was blonde. It sort of wears me for a little bit. Hey, and also, I mean this isn't the best outfit to show off my fringe, is it? I'm sweating. Well, I'm not sweating anymore. You're not sweating anymore. You're not sweating any. You've been a bit sick this morning, haven't you? God, my mum is due to come round because I didn't know if I'd be back in time for my Tesco shop to arrive. And my mum left yesterday at the same time we left and the, the room still has the cups of tea and everything in it. That's the sort of thing that may well send my mum over the edge. So let's have a quick tidy up of that. Have a wee. By which point my Tesco shop might be here and then we'll chat about the day I'll have a shower put some actual clothes on no maybe I'll clean first because I want to clean the bathrooms before my guests get here got to get rid of some of those flowers as well because they look a bit on the sad side so yeah let's take these out like a good hostess I don't know where my mum is maybe she's not coming anymore who would have got my Tesco shop oh hi the Tesco order's just arrived, and I thought I would unpack it whilst having a little glass of water, because I need to drink more water, um, and talking you through plans for the weekend. Not books for the weekend yet, just plans. Plans, making muffins at some point. Well, making black pepper, cheddar, and sage muffins, which I'm hugely excited by, but just realized there was no sage. Maybe I didn't even order any sage. That's insane. Maybe there'll be basil. Who knows? Right, so I'm going to put this away. And I just thought I'd talk you through what I've got. Some of the things that we regularly get. Some things for dinner tonight. Some things for other bits. And just talk you through. This is £68 worth of shopping. Um, with regards to shopping. Normally, we get Gusto two to three times a month. Um, which is a food... Well, food like... How would you even describe it? Like a food like prep service, so you get sent meal ideas and things like that. Here's one. 
tofu schnitzel with quick pickled potato salad and green beans and we get those two to three times a month and then I do one big shot and that's normally to top up on stuff for baking so we do a lot of baking this year and other bits and just to top up the cupboards so yes yeah, so this is a 68 pound shop I always get it delivered let's go first things oh these are all things for the these are all things for the baking so as I said I'm making black pepper cheddar and sage muffins more on that later but there's the cheddar for that <coughs> ricotta and goat's cheese therefore later on how long will that last for 18th of the 4th might have to move things around a bit oh David's been an absolute darling and rejig the fridge for me um, then I've got a red cabbage because tonight we've got friends around for dinner and we're having fake kebabs um, with this what the cluck which I've mentioned before is a really good fake meat substitute I quite I'm a vegetarian that quite likes fake meat um, and I think what the cluck is brilliant it goes really really well in curries um, it's soy based chicken style chunks and they're on offer in Tesco's at the moment for two pounds each so yeah so we're having that as well as halloumi um, then I just got a few cans to top up so the chopped tomatoes coconut milk and baked beans these are all gonna go in the pantry so although we keep some stuff in there I don't think there's all that much room in there there's not so I'm gonna put those in I'll call it the pantry it's just literally the cupboard where we keep the coats pesto that and chickpeas again more topping up the pesto is for some muffins that can go in there there we go some self-raising flour like I said been doing loads and loads of baking but I will get my other self-raising flour out now been getting through the self-raising flour yogurt Greek style yogurt I have quite a lot of yogurt because it goes in a lot of the muffins that I've been making recently and I have it for breakfast with fruit that's a rye flour that's to go in the pantry as well that's for another set of muffins experimenting with muffins I am some red grapes for David and me but David loves a red grape. So do I actually. Some salady bits. Some salad tonight. I always get a tofu. And I always get the tofu tofu. This I think holds itself best. It's not gonna do you scrambled tofu or anything like that. But I think for what we have it in, we have it in sweet sour tofu, we have it breadcrumbed as like nuggets and stuff like that. This is the best one. They also do a smoked one, which is really good. And this was on offer for £1.80. Halloumi, we'll be having that, but I always buy a halloumi. Toothpaste, because we just run out of toothpaste. Some brown sugar, because just run out of like brown, brown sugar. I really am, like, I'm really getting through all the stuff that I'm buying for baking. So I'm feeling very pleased with myself. Although the next three weeks, more on that later that's annoying when that happens isn't it bananas that come in plastic the next three weeks are all savory brownies so i won't be using as much of the sugar i got me and my friend a little a bottle of a 0% sauvignon blanc for tonight because we've got friends coming around got a butter that lowers my cholesterol because i need to lower my cholesterol got an avocado david's got a deodorant the avocado goes in the chopped salad. I've already got an avocado in there, so. Marmite. Oh, will I have a Marmite? Will I have Marmite on crumpet for breakfast, lunch? Because uh, I haven't eaten anything yet and I've been out for a run. I mean, not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, I think I will. I haven't had Marmite for a long time, so I've been looking forward to the Marmite returning. This is for David tonight. Dr. Pepper Zero, that is his fave. I've got some Marmite cheeses. Marmite cheese. Oh, they changed the shape of these. And also there's so much plastic there. Um, I could put it on a crumpet. Then I've got some basil, some cucumber and tomatoes. The basil, don't put your basil in the fridge. I always do and it's wrong. And then I also got two lots of Pepsi Max for the friend we've got coming tonight, who's a fellow diabetic like myself. So we'll have sugar-free bits, I think. Because I also don't drink caffeine, and I think I got some caffeine-free ones. This is caffeine-free, there are. Speaking of caffeine-free, caffeine-free tea bags. These are, I get one of these every month with the shop just to keep it topped up. 
Oh, we've actually got a few left over from last month. But yeah, we drink a lot of tea in this house. So I always get a... This is one, actually this didn't come from last month. This was one that David had to pick up in the shops halfway. So I'll just be filling up that. That was Yorkshire tea, but we don't always get that. This is the best decaf tea after Barry's tea, but we don't always get it because um, it's expensive. Paneer, oh there's the other halloumi. Always get a paneer because we have paneer in curries almost every month, so it's always helpful to have one of those. Another yogurt. That's normally the yogurt I take to work in that shape one, because of. Loaf of bread for David. Greaseproof paper, because of all the baking, and wedges. Deleting wedges around here. These flatbreads, which are so nice, they're the ones we're gonna have tonight. A Greek style flatbread, they're like thick and yummy, so we'll be having those tonight, which is exciting. Some brown pasta, which I needed to decant into there. We made the move to the wholemeal. Oh, there's the other Pepsi Max. I need to make some of that. Um, some roasted and salted peanuts. We quite like those. Not very good for cholesterol, those guys. But I also put peanuts, like crush up a few peanuts and put a lot on top of, well, muffins. I did some peanut butter and um, jam muffins and curries and salads. And we put it in sweet and sour as well, so they go in everything. Wholemeal noodles. Quite often have noodles with veg, tofu, things like that. Sweet and sour tofu, we mix it up and have that with uh, red wine vinegar because I've run out. And I've put that in a lot of salads. And a bag of potatoes, even though we've got a bag of potatoes there. But yeah, like I said, we and a mayonnaise. We need a lot, a lot, a lot of um, wedges. So yeah, I think I'll just top up. Then I think I'll have my breakfast lunch. Then I'll talk you through the reading and the, and the weekend. Okay, then we'll talk you through that this weekend. Sorry, this is really loud. And then we'll get on to some reading, maybe. Crumpets were delicious <laughs> with Marmite on. God, I just love crumpets and I love Marmite. Nom, 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 nom. Um, it is now half past 12. I mean, I've done quite a lot. I've been for a run, had my hair done, got my Tesco shop. The rest of the day will play out thusly. I need to pick my books that I'm going to read for the day. I've also got some muffins to bake. I'm so excited about baking though. I've been, this, to be honest, that's the whole reason I picked that book because I knew there were savoury muffins in there and I just love savoury muffins. Um, I want to clean the bathroom because we've got guests coming tonight um, and have a little tidy up in here. Although that's normally David's domain. So I might see if, da I'll have a little tidy up but like David will be doing the majority of that. Um, I, yeah, so my guests are coming up about seven o'clock. I've also got, it's, it's cousin Laura's birthday today. My cousin Laura's birthday. Happy birthday, my cousin Laura. Um, and as her birthday present, I've done this, which is wonderful. It's geometric shapes that spell out the words wonderful, the word wonderful. I'm so thrilled with it. I've got one, I've got the U to finish. So I've got to finish that either today or tomorrow. We're seeing them tomorrow. Um, and then I've got to get a frame for it as well. So some of tomorrow's day might be going out to get a frame for this because that's her birthday present. So I'm very, very pleased with it and I hope she likes it. The colours and the geometric shapes really remind me remind me of her. So hopefully she will like it. It's been hard work though, guys. Like this has been a big slog doing all of these same things. There's not much change over, um, but yeah, have enjoyed doing it. Um, I mentioned this in my um, Easter, week, uh, Easter weekend reading vlog and that I would share the pattern down below. The seller doesn't exist anymore. So I obviously, and I only bought it a couple of weeks ago. So that's a shame. Um, but yeah, sadly, so that's why I was unable to share it there. But there we go. Um, onwards. So let's talk about the reading for the weekend then. And then, oh yeah, so, sorry. Tomorrow we're going to uh, my cousin Laura's house in the evening for dinner. And then Sunday, David and I are gonna go to the cinema. We're definitely gonna watch Seize Them. I don't know what the other film we're gonna watch. David's keen to go and watch two. Watching two films isn't my favorite thing to do at the cinema, but um, yeah. Oh, Daphne's being very cute. She's looking out the window. Oh, and Daphne's got new food arriving today, which is very exciting. So I'll explain it all when it gets here, but somebody from a company called Cat 
Atkin, which does raw food for cats, had contacted me and said, oh, would you like a, a, um, a 14 day free trial? So I said, yes, please. So they've sent that through to us. Um, Daphne's been on, we'll talk about this when the food arrives and then I'll, I'll, I'll bore you with that. But here we go. So as ever, Oh, I need my challenge as well. I think it's over here. I haven't done one of these challenges. It feels like it's been ages since I've done a Friday reading vlog, which is true because last weekend I did a Easter weekend reading vlog. And then the weekend before that, I didn't do one because I tend to do three in a month just to give myself a, a weekend free. So the plans are, as always, we will be ending on a poem for every spring day, which will be lovely. April we're in now. Um, and we'll be at some point listening to a piece of classical music over the weekend. Um, the question we will be answering, I feel all discombobulated. I can't remember what order I normally do this in. Maybe there is no order. We are right at the end of these now. God, we've only got three left. Well, you've got three bloody left. Well, let's just go for the one on top, which is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Your favourite fictional character suddenly appears at your front door. What book would you share to acquaint them in this new world they find themselves in? Oh, okay. Interesting. Let's read that again. So I've got to think of a book that sort of represents the world that we're in. Your favourite fictional character suddenly appears at your front door. What book would you share to acquaint them with this new world they find themselves in. Interesting, very interested to hear your answers on that. So there we go. I'll read it one more because it's quite a lengthy one. Your favorite fictional character suddenly appears at your front door. What book would you share to acquaint them with this new world that they find themselves in? Interesting. Then, oh yeah, let me tell you about the cake. So we've been slowly working our way through cooking out of the sweet roasting tin. I'm having an absolutely lovely time. And we have now reached the, oh, what I should say is that I cooked these. So we've, one of the things that didn't appear in any vlog, because I'm working my way through this, is the peanut butter raspberry and banana muffins, which I made Wednesday. So I'll insert a picture here. Everybody's had them. They've said they're lovely. Even David, who doesn't like bananas in cakes, have said they're lovely. My dad was thoroughly impressed. So yeah, made them, but not in a vlog. So the next three weeks, I'm so excited, are savoury muffins. Starting today with blackberry, cheddar and sage muffins, although I haven't got any sage, so we'll think of something else to do. Um, maybe basil. And yeah, we're going to be making those today. God, I'm so excited. It's not all that much for, che for something called cheddar muffins. There's only 35 grams of cheddar in. Yeah, they're just on top. The cheddar's on top. They'll be delicious, I'm certain. So here we go. So we will start with that. We'll make them at some point today. Um, then the reading. So um, I did quite a lot of starting of me reading during my me, me, um, me Easter reading vlog last week, which I'll link down below because I've mentioned it loads of times. Um, and you'll know that I'm thick in reading books from the Women's Prize for Fiction Longlist. I currently have five of them out from the library. Da -da. Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. A Trace of Sun by Pam Williams. The Blue Beautiful World by Karen Lord. The Wren the Wren by Anne Emright. And Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenville. Now we're reading this for Patreon Book Club at the end of the month. And I like it to be quite fresh. So we will discard this. This will be read, but towards the end of the month. So that one's not going to be read. And then I'm going to start one of these. But also because I've got to finish the, or, uh, because I've got to finish the cross stitch and because I'm going to be doing some baking, I also need an audio book. Now, I've got, the only one I've got on reservation, because they don't have them in in my libraries, is Soldier Sailor. And I'm just going to check, because I think it's got a 12-week wait on it. Holds. Holds. 10 weeks. Well, 10 weeks isn't going to happen today. So, so, does that mean I don't want to read this because I've got 10, because I could have this in audiobook at some point? Mm, I don't know. The Wren the Wren, I listened to the audiobook of The Actress when it was long listed a few years ago during lockdown and I didn't really get on with it. So does that make me think maybe I won't get on with the audio of this book? I don't know. The Blue Beautiful World, I think it's best I read this in font because apparently it's very confusing um, and quite world building. I feel like for me that would work best if I'm looking at it on the page. 
So we won't listen to the audio of that. And then A Trace of Sun. I mean, I was tempted to start this today. I really was tempted to start this today. So what I'm going to be doing is with the audiobook is I'm going to be listening to it on Spotify. I don't know if you know, but if you've got Spotify Premium, you get, I think it's 12 hours of free audiobooks every month, um, which then recaps on whatever day it is next. Now, I've only listened to one book from there, and that was the end of Babel. Um, let's have a look at the picture of the long-listed books, and then I'll see if any of them are on... Um, Hangman by Maya Bin Binyam. In Defence of the Act, Philippa sent to be that, so that's good. And then she fell by Alyssa. Let's see if that's on there. Because that's what I haven't been able to get hold of. And then she fell. No, <laughs> it's not. Oh, in fact, it's shown me the ones that they have. Right, so let's work for them. So Hangman by Maya Binyam. Let's see if that's on there. No, that's not on there either. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's not on there. In Defence of the Act, Philippa sent it to me, and then she fails not on there. The Wren, the Wren I've got here. The Maiden I've read. Brotherless Night I've read. Restless Dolly Munda will be reading later. Enter Ghost I'm currently reading. Soldier Sailor I've got here. Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster I've read. The Beautiful World I've got here. Western Lane I've read. Night Bloom I've read. Ordinary Human Failings. Ooh, maybe I'll go for that one. Let's see if that's on there. It is. Oh God, it's only five hours. Okay, I think I'll go for Ordinary Human Failings. So I'm gonna to listen to Ordinary Human Failings. That's decided. Great, right, that's decided, great. So now I need to pick the book that I'm going to read. I feel like I'm putting these two off. <laughs> I feel like I'm putting these two off because one of them's about a subject that I'm not interested in and one of them's I've read a book by that author before and not got on with it. So, I mean, this one has to be back on the, the 12th of April, I think. When's this one due back? 23rd of April. A Trace of Sun I was interested in reading. I thought, oh, maybe that's the one I'll pick up today. I think because it's paperback and I haven't been reading all that many paperback books recently. And then, like I said, The, Be the Blue Beautiful World, I feel like needs reading face to face. This is also due back on the 12th. So the sensible thing would be was to read the bl the blue beautiful world, but I think I'm going to go for a trace of sun. Yeah, I'm going to go for a trace of sun, and I'm going to listen to ordinary failings, ordinary human failings, which is a good decision. And then the last thing I need to do, I'll pop these back. I just need to see if there's any either of those books will match a challenge. I haven't had a challenge prize in a long time. And if I'm honest, I'd like a challenge prize, but I don't know that any of them are gonna fit. Let's have a look. Right, so this is a book, a box of cha uh, reading challenges that my lovely friend Jen made me for Christmas. I've done, I think, six? No, I've done four, I think. Yes, I have done four. I'll just tell you what I've done, just so I can revel in my success. I've done read a book picked by David, either one he bought you or just selected from your TBR. I read my husband. Read a book by an author whose work you have loved before. I can't remember who I picked for that. Oh, Babel, I think. Uh, read a book that was on another booktuber's best books of the year list. <laughs> I can't remember what that was either. <laughs> oh, there we go. Read a book in translation. I read Stolen by... Um, Anna Listerius, I think her name was. But the ones that I've got left are, let's see if any of these match anything. Read one of the largest books on your TBR. None of those are the largest books on the TBR. Read a book you heard recommended on a podcast. I haven't heard either of these recommended on a podcast. Read an arc, neither of them are arcs. I'm very interested as to what that is. I don't know what that is. Um, read a book that fits with the season and make a seasonal snack or meal to go with it. No, and I think that might be, I don't know what that is either. Headband maybe? Uh, that might be an autumny one. Um, read one of the shortest books on your TBR. No, I guess that means from the shelves, really, doesn't it? And read one of the oldest books on your TBR. Either you've owned it for ages or it was published a long time ago. None of those are matching, are they? Well, never mind. We move, so no prize this week, despite me gagging for one. 
But let's read a little bit of A Trace of Sun. I'm going to read you the first line because I like to do that. Part one, June 1960. Rafe sat on the crooked step, taking shade from the ice squinting brightness of the midday Caribbean sun. First line. Restlessly cradled between Mammy's knees, his elbows pressing down on her thin thighs, he listened to her voice, low and conspiratorial. Third line. I dream I sit down on a big white work bird, she told him. There we go. I'll carry on with this, I think. Well, I read 44 pages of that and I quite enjoyed it. So it's, it's very early setting the scene of um, Rafe and his mother in Granada um, and her mother taking his younger brother to London to uh, uh, reunite with her husband, Rafe's dad, um, and she's pregnant. So they go over there. Seven years later, um, he, after many years of believing that it's just around the corner that he's going to be reunited with his mother, um, he goes to London so well says London maybe I've just assumed it's London maybe we don't know where it is yet but yeah he's just arrived there and he's finding it very very different from Granada um, and he doesn't really like his little sister who he's never met before his mum was pregnant with the little sister when he left so yeah and he's a completely different person he's a teenager now and, and things like that so yeah it's set in the 60s uh, we're in November 1967 now so yeah I'm enjoying it um, but I'm now going to go and start listening to the audiobook and Clean the bathroom, I think. Yeah. Well, some sad news. All right, Daphne. Um, I don't. I can't listen to ordinary human failings because you have to buy it, and I'm not going to buy it. Hey, you're in the bath. So, what else? No, that's uh, Hamilton. So I'm not going to be able to do it. So what was the other? I mean, I was quite looking forward to listening to that as well. So I'm going to have to listen to one that I've already got. Do I go for Soldier Sailor? Yeah, I mean that... Oh, that's locked as well. You can't buy audiobooks in the app, but titles you've already purchased through Spotify can be listened here, but... Maybe I can't listen to any of these things. I don't understand. <laughs> Does anyone understand? They've got like a little lock on them. River East, River West is locked as well. The Maiden, that's locked. So how do I listen then? <laughs> I mean, how fun is this for you guys? Audiobooks now included in premium. Enjoy 15 hours of listening, 15 hours. Tell us which books you like and we'll recommend titles for you. So none of these are books that I want to listen to. <laughs> As in, they're all ones that I've... So do you... Yes. Oh. The origin Wednesday afternoon in the laboratory where I used to work. These are just playing. Was the name wrong? Maybe you can't listen to everything. Yeah. Um. How? Maybe now I'll click something though. Now let's see. Oh, it's still locked. Maybe it's only a selection, guys. Maybe it's only a selection. In which case, I may as well just listen to something that I've got on Libby. That's rather frustrating, isn't it? But hey, stop watching my frustrations. I need to clean the bathroom and find something, so. Hi. <laughs> so I've just found the red and the red on there, so I'm gonna listen to that. It's seven hours, 40 minutes, and I'm going to clean the bathroom while I do that. And what are you going to do, Dexy girl? Dexy baby? Dexy girl, look, she's so blue and beautiful. We love you. You're so cuddly. Love you, baby. Okay, you can go. You can leave. We're gonna clean. Do you want to help mummy clean? You can't really. Right. The red, the red. Not where I was planning on going, but hey, we'll do it. Brought to you by Penguin. Well, actually, the first bit of the red, the red, I'm quite interested in. <laughs> it's talking about someone who has really, really bad period pain. 
and it basically takes up her home, whole month because she's thinking about it before the period arrives. Oh my god, there's so much good stuff in here, Duffy! Um, and yeah, this is for you, Duffy! Um, so yeah, so I've only I've, I've cleaned the bathroom and then just as... Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. And I've got a bookmark out of it. So, this is... Daphne's food has arrived and cutely, they've actually written Daphne's name on the box. Debbie, this is for you! So this is the 14-day kit from Catkin. They also do litter. How to be a hardcore cat parent. Look at that guy on the front. I'm going to look after you so good now. So there's lots and lots. Fresh meat, so good you can eat it yourself. Well, I would be eating it myself as I'm a vegetarian. Gently cooked and frozen to stay fresh, free from grains, filler and preservatives, independent brands and seen putting cat first, personalised daily portions. Lots of benefits, better digestion, less stink in the litter box. I'll sign up for that. More energy and playfulness. What about less energy and less playfulness? I reckon definitely love you. Shinier, thicker coat and fewer hairballs. Easy to maintain, healthy weight. So those are two things that I'm a bit concerned about. Daffy's coat, when we got her, was gorgeous. Now I know she's losing her winter coat at the moment, but it's sort of gone into, well she's just losing her coat, but it's gone a bit bitty. And when I brush her, which she doesn't love, but she'll let me do it, um, sort of does that. And also I feel like she's a bit, it's hard because we're comparing her to Minnie, who was a very old cat, but Daphne's definitely much more barrelly in shape. Right. Here we go. So how we do it. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So we store it in the freezer for up to six months, defrost in the fridge, stays fresh in the fridge for up to five days. Once the tray is open, serve the food the same day. Here we go. So it says, feed 100% catkin on day one, nothing else. Yes, you read that right. Feed only catkin for the first 24 hours. No treats, no other food, no pandering. Well, lucky because it looks as though they've sent us some treats as well. So I was almost about to go over that. Start with cluck for four days. So there's different versions. So cluck, which I assume is chicken. Gobble, which is probably turkey. Moo, cow, oink, pig, bar, lamb, quack, duck, and splash fishies. Um, so they've given me three clucks. Let's have a look and see what it all looks like. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's nicely packaged. So these will fit in the freezer. Good. Yeah, look at all of these. So we're going to start with a cluck. So I need to get one of these out for her to have that tonight. And then this is all going to go in the freezer and to defrost as well. Start with cluck for four days. So what is one of these then? This is one portion. Store in the freezer, defrost in the fridge, stays fresh in the fridge for up to five days, serve within two days once I'm open. Okay, dr apparently, dry and wet food are heat blasted to last on the shelves. Fresh is gently cooked and frozen for maximum nutrition for your carnival cat. Cat life over shelf life. Oh, okay, so these are portions. So this is the morning portion and this is the evening portion. Now I'm getting this in the day, so we'll start with the evening portion. But I'll keep this out so I can give her that tomorrow as well. Feed half a tray for breakfast, half for dinner. Oh, okay. Oh, no, sorry. This is a tray. So yeah, this is that for breakfast, that for dinner. Together, these two halves have 100% of your, da your cat's daily calorie and nutritional needs. Skeptical cat, and apparently if you top it with these sprinkles, cat's still unsure, give them some space. Cat liking it, try a new recipe on day five. Not eating after 24 hours, serve half catkin, half their old food. They'll learn to associate catkin with more familiar food. Okay. Well, we'll do it, shall we? Let's see how we get on. So, live unveiling of how Dappy's gonna get on with her new food. This is for you, Dappy. So, the, 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 the story with Daphne's food was that when we had our old cat, Minnie, we fed her royal cannon biscuits every day. She was a Persian cat, so um, they advised us when we got her, and the vets advised us not to feed her with um, wet food because it gets stuck in their teeth, and she'd already had one tooth removed when we got her. So they said, just feed her on biscuits. Well, we fed her on the same Royal Cannon biscuits, which were for Persians. And then we went to the senior and then we went to the renal ones and she loved it. Like every time, it was like, honestly, like we were putting out food that she'd never seen before every single day. Poor love, but she loved it. So when we got Dappy, we knew she was on wet food. So we bought her some British short hair, um, Royal Cannon biscuits and wet food. She wasn't really all that bothered about the wet food. And then when we moved her in, she had some tummy trouble. So we um, 
the vets advised us to boil her a, either a chicken breast or a bit of white fish. And we did that for a few months, didn't we? But recently, she just seems to have gone off it and wasn't eating it and was only eating the biscuits that we were giving her in the morning. So when this company, Cat King, got in touch with me and said, would I like to try it? I thought, well, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I know people that feed their, well, one person that feeds their cat with raw food and other people that feed their dog with raw food, including my mother, who feeds her dog with raw food. And I thought it was worth a go. So yeah, 14 days worth. And I mean, watch the video to see how she gets on. But there is, refer a friend to Catkin and their first box of fresh recipes will be completely free. So I'll put all of that details down below. Um, but yeah, I'm quite looking forward to giving her this. Are you excited? You are excited. Right, I better go and put all of this in the freezer then. So far so good. We haven't fed her yet, <laughs> but so far so good. It's time to make my black pepper cheddar and sage muffins. Although, what did I say? No sage. We're gonna do it with basil instead. Black pepper ch cheddar and basil muffins? We'll see. If they're lovely, maybe I'll make them again with sage another day. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees C. Consider it done. Right, let's get the bits out then. 250 grams of self-raising flour, 35 grams of strong cheddar cheese, one level tablespoon of baking powder, Bake. Oh, come here, come here to me. Baking powder, one teaspoon of sea salt flakes. Oh, I'm gonna need the one tablespoon of freshly ground black pepper. Freshly ground, what about ground and has been in this pot? That'll count. Um, sage leaves, please. Olive oil, natural yog, as I said. There's a lot of natural yog being used. Milk. and a free range egg. Never did put the Marmites away, did I? God, I'm so excited about these. I can't even begin to tell you. Right, let's get going then. How nice are these? Very nice. There were 12, there is now six. <laughs> I only have one. Me and Charlotte ate two each, and then David came home and had one, and then we shared another one. They are so nice. They are lovely. I need to put them in somewhere where I'm not going to keep you eating can't them. Eat them. I'm going to put them in a, a pot. And then I guess we'll start getting ready. For the evening's events. I'm already dressed for the evening's events. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Dressed for the evening's events. I realise I'm putting deodorant on, so I better go and do that. Bye. Oh. Well, we had a lovely evening, didn't we, David? We did. I just feel very tired now. But yes, a lovely evening. I wore my skirt again, didn't I? Didn't I, David? Yes. <laughs> the food was nice, then we did some music intro quizzing, which was very fun. And now I'm going to go to bed and read for a bit. And David, what are you doing, Deppy? I want to brush you, but you won't let me. Update on the food is that I put it down. She was very excited about it when I was getting it out of the pack, wasn't she, David? Mm -hmm. Put it down for her about six o'clock. She took three bites and hasn't been back for it. That isn't hugely unusual. No, She's a bit it's of not. a grazer. And, and especially because it's new food to her. So but it when it's wet food, days. you don't really want to leave it out too long. So. She might have been excited because we've had people round tonight, so she's been, she likes Distracted. to be in the thick of it all, doesn't she? She does like to be involved. So maybe she'll go and think about it now, but yeah, we don't leave it out all night. But yeah, I think I could go in now. I didn't get the cottage fish like I hoped I would. 
And then we need to go and buy a frame for that cross stitch tomorrow, David. Oh, she's going near the food. That means she's doing a bit of cleaning up around food. That's what that noise means. She stands over the bowl, it's very cute. I know, she is very cute. She went down very well with our guests. They liked her a yeah, lot. Yeah, they're, they're tough people though, aren't they? Yeah. Any eating? No. Not interested. Not yet. You need to eat it, because you've got shit loads of it. You look nice now, I've given you a brush, why don't you let me brush you all over? You do look nice after a brush. I'm very tired, so I think I'm going to go to sleep. And I'll see you in the morning. We need to go and get a frame tomorrow, David. A frame? I want for Laura. Oh, gosh, shit. Cool. And I'm thinking, if they haven't got any in being it, I'd like to go to Dunelm really, but I know going to Dunelm's a pain. You almost want to go on the way, don't we? I know, but I won't be able to wrap it then. And also it's sort of limiting, if there isn't one there, then we're mm. screwed. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, you don't need, oh, she's been so cute. You don't need to sit here and watch me think about frames. I'm going to go to bed. What? Yeah, yeah. I just feel like this is very, very dull video. <laughs> you've had at least seven, you've had several sections of twenty seconds of just doing nothing. It's like I just feel quite tired. That's <laughs> all. Stop it when he goes to bed. David, turn it off. <laughs> no, don't kick it. Morning, my friends. Wow, wow, we. I had. 11 hours sleep and it was lovely I've woken up feeling lovely we had a lovely night last night oh yeah I remember being over there talking to you and David said I should stop the camera so today's jobs get this done and then get myself to the shop to buy a, a frame for it whether that be on the way to my cousin Laura's or not that's Daffy being excited. David's just making me a cup of tea. Should we have one of those delicious muffins, David? Um, you can have one. I'm going to have an egg sandwich. Oh. I'll have one of those delicious muffins then. Right. Whilst I finish this. And David's about to watch the vegan cheese episode of The Apprentice. Which I haven't been that into this year, The Apprentice. Um... I just find them all a bit idiotic, if I'm being honest. What, well, The Apprentice? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who uh, went last time? Uh, Moira and Raj. Oh, I mean, Moira's been on bloody borrowed time for ages. Yeah. And um, because, you know, we saw the clips on Gogglebox of that one. Oh, like, yeah. Raj's one. She's literally just going, wow, 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 wow. Oh, <laughs> it's God. like, she's just repeat. <laughs> When I was in the yeah. ballroom, that's why uh, and Raj, when you went up and, and, um, oh God, what's her name? Oh, Karen just went, wow, wow, wow. Oh, yeah. cheeky Karen. But, but when both of them got fired, um, what did she say? I think she just said, um, she, like, I don't know, she, she even said, like, thank you or something, as, as like, because Alan fired them. Oh no, she went good luck to the pair of them. She's never said that to anyone, so she obviously like, she looked a little bit upset about it. Oh. But they had to go. Well, there we go. But Phil, Chef Phil, Chef Phil, um, he's project manager for this one. Because he lost again last and night. And so he's lost nine in a row, and if, he, and if he doesn't win this as project manager, then he's going. Chef Phil, and yet still hasn't been sacked. Yeah. Oh, the safety of him. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to eat my thing. I've, I've just, I've, I haven't been awake that long, but I've read a little bit of my book, A Trace of Sun, which I'm quite enjoying. Um, yeah, not all that much to report, as I haven't been awake that long. We're going to Laura's today, and yeah, looking forward to it. I need to find out, actually, if there's anything we need to bring along tonight. Can I too? 
Two muffins instead of an egg sandwich? Yeah. Absolutely, David. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I'll have two and then they're done. God, they didn't even last 24 hours. I think they've been the quickest eaten. I mean, I know Charlotte was here yesterday helping. God, I feel yeah. tempted. Yeah. I could I could make the fig and basil ones for Laura. The what one, sorry? The next ones are the fig and basil. I could make those for, oh, I haven't got any figs. Or I could make the next ones for her. What, instead of cookies? Yeah. If you want to, Bob, I don't mind. Could do that, couldn't I? Yeah, I mean, we I haven't got anything make... nice to present them in, but I think you can get stuff in. Mm. Um, in I was just because I, I wasn't going to make chocolate ones. I was going to make ones with raisins in. Oh my god, these look so good. But, Let's um, see if they're as good the second time, the second day round. Yeah, if you want to make her some, look, that's, if you... they're so nice. They are really nice. I mean, I could make these again. I mean, yes, you should make them again. Um, oh my god, Adam, they're lovely. You mind? I mean, it is practically lunchtime, so. We're in a bit of a rush because I'm baking cakes and then we're going straight to my cousin Laura's. Well, I'm baking goat cheese fig and basil muffins, which is what I decided to go with. I can't remember whether Laura likes goat cheese or not. I've got a feeling the only thing she doesn't like, and I should know this as a cousin, is grapefruit. So hopefully, Goat cheese is nice. And I know it's quite an acquired taste, but the muffins themselves are gonna be lovely, I think. But the batter is very stiff. So here we go. I have to film the whole process just because there was no time to film the whole process. But the process has gone well. I also was unable to buy, do 12 of these. Three, two, three. Four, five, six. I was unable to buy um, individual like muffin holders, so I've ended up buying, which I think will come in helpful, but I didn't have on my, well, D David ended up buying it because he's, it was a treat. Um, I bought, oh, I'll go and show you, something to carry muffins around in, because I did think, the more muffins I'm making, and turns out I'm actually quite good at making muffins, I'll be needing to take the places, so. David bought me this for 10 pounds. So it's not airtight or anything, it literally is just to transport them. But I thought when they get there, I'm sure we'll all eat them anyway. And then, um, it'll be useful to, to transport stuff around. Anyway, I've really got to get on by. Right, I've just, I've wrapped this up beautifully, but I remembered that quite often I complete these beautiful um, things and then don't show, cross stitch, and then don't show you the finished result. This is the finished result. I'm very pleased with it. I think she's gonna really like it. I'm not in love with the frame, but it was the best we could do in order to fit it in. And also I ironed it for ages to try and get the, the marks out and it just wouldn't so it's just as it is now there we go so now i'll tie that back in we're just waiting for the muffins to finish cooking and they've got to just cool just for a little bit before i put them in the tray and then we can get on our merry way david what what, what say you yeah he's just having a little chocolate i might have a little chocolate oh but all the good ones have gone already down to cream eggs which i hate dinky dinky well because Everyone was eating them last night. But they're not here now. No, but people was eating them last them off. night. Including you. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I was eating the ones I liked last night. So, whenever you want to apologise, I'm willing to accept. Sorry. <laughs> They look really nice. You'll have to take, <laughs> it looks like I've decorated them with um, foliage, but that that's to go so on top of it, on top of the lovely muffins goes rosemary and honey. So I just sort of put the rosemary in there rather than take a pack. So yeah, I hope they taste nice. But we're leaving now, having a clear for the journey. See so you when I get back. Hardly any reading done today, David. Oh. 
Lots and lots of listening to the archers on the way there and back though, because we're quite far behind, you know. Morning. Sunday. I had a lovely evening at my cousin Laura's last night. Lovely Asian bits. Lots of dim sum and things like that. Very nice. And then come home and slept. <laughs> slept very deeply. Um, just working up now. The plan was, was that we were going to go to the cinema to watch two films today. We are going to go and watch Kung Fu Panda 4, which I wasn't that bothered about watching anyway. Well, to be honest, I didn't want to go and watch it, but David really did. And then we're going to go and watch Seize Them. Um, at about ten past three. So, yeah, the morning has become our own, really. So, something I alluded to at the very top of this video was that I deleted the footage from the Q and A I did, but I'm going to see if it's on my um, computer still if I transferred it over there, because I might well have done. I also might not have done. But I might well have done. And if I did, then I can film a little bit of wrap up. Because I should have put a video up this morning, but I didn't. Not much more readings happened, if I'm being honest. I read a couple of double pages of this. But yeah, we're on page 74. Ever Trace of Sun by Pam Williams. It's I'm quite enjoying it. And listened to a little bit more of the audiobook while I was uh, getting ready yesterday. But yeah, Laura, very, very pleased with our cross stitch. And uh, muffins. The muffins were delicious, by the way. So, yeah. So, maybe a few little jobs today. And the cinema, which I'm quite looking forward to. That's it, really. I need to find out if I've got that footage still. I need to do my nails as well. And I was going to go for a run, but I might save it and go for a run tomorrow. When I, because I've got new hair, I don't want the beautiful colour to fade really quickly. So I always try and not wash my hair that much. Which means I can't go for a run that much either. <laughs> so I think I might go for a run. I mean, it's still fine. I went for a run on Friday. So it just means that I'm going for a run on Monday instead of today. I might go for a run when I get home from work tomorrow. And then I can wash my hair ready for Tuesday. I think that's what I might do. So yeah. I've also got to start work on my sister's birthday cross stitch. Because that'll be next month. But I already know I'm doing her a disco ball. For a kitchen. For a kitchen disco. I come with great news. The footage was on the on the laptop already. So I've been very pleased with myself. So that means, um, well, what that meant is that David and I were able to record the second half of the Q and A, and I'm just editing it now. However, it is an hour and nineteen minutes long. Oh, there you are, Deppy. Oh, bye. Um, so. That's going to take some time. The cinema's at 3.50, so I thought I'd just sit and have a read for a bit with A Trace of Sun. Have a good old sesh with that. So I'm on page 86. I'll continue on. And now we're in August 1972. You're sitting in your reading yeah, chair. Lovely. Just, in the q and I was talking about how I like the fact that this is here now and it means I can read. The only thing is, is that we can't have the window open because Daphne's much quicker than Minnie and we can't. Mm. Yeah, right. Although we've got that window open a little crack. <coughs> Although I must say, I don't know how... Obviously, I'm not saying we test this, but she's not as interested in trying to get out as what Minnie was. Even when we've had the front door open, she, I've held it open and she's been near the door, but she's never, like, darted out. I wouldn't trust it. Oh, no. I'm never saying we, we experiment. Let's what I'm experiment, saying is... But let's read. Oh, let's I just can't get comfortable with all these stupid pillows at the moment. Don't say stupid. That's what my niece says. You're not allowed to say stupid. Hello, happy Monday. Absolutely bypassed Sunday, didn't we? And I've been to work today and I've just got back from the cinema. David stayed on at the cinema to watch Monkey Man. I have come home, we watched Robot Dreams and it was an absolute delight. I was saying to David before we left that 
I've seen very little, I've seen and read very little good stuff this year. There's been a lot of mediocrity, which in its, what have I got stuck to my coat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> which like, th th there's nothing wrong with mediocrity, but it does get a bit much if it's all mediocrity. But Robot Dreams was an absolute delight, so I'm very pleased about that. Um, yeah, so I better wrap this up because I want to, yeah, what is that stuck on my coat, Dappy? Just walked all the way from the cinema with something stuck to my bum on my coat. How embarrassing. Um, I'm going to wrap everything up now so I can go and edit this before David gets back from the cinema. We've got a few bits to do. First of all, I've got to listen to a piece of classical music, so we better do that first. Uh, the date today is the 8th of April. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a spring piece. Lovely. It's called Le, Prin Le Printemps Spring. OP18 by Darius Milhoud, who lived between 18... Don't... Oh, she's eating whatever was on the back of my coat. It was a little packet of something. There's a bit of cellophane, either from where I've sat in my friend's car or where I've sat in the cinema. Uh, by Darius Milhoud, who lived between 1892 and 1974. The artistic stereotype of the tortured creative genius is a pervasive one, but if anyone can challenge it, it's Darius Milhoud, one of the groups of Paris-based components known as Le Cis. Milhoud was actually famous among the classical community for being a nice guy, with some commentators expressing their suspicions that anyone of such a sunny disposition could produce art of any real complexity. Milhoud pr proves time and time again that depth need not derive from darkness. He was a highly prolific composer but had wide interest beyond the realm of classical, including jazz. He talked Dave Brubeck of Take Five fame and Brazilian music. See the entry on the 22nd of June. Milhoud was a legendary teacher. Some other notable students include Steve Reich, uh, William Bolcom, Philip Glass, and the pop legend, Burt Bacharach, to whom he apparently said, don't be afraid of writing something people can remember and whistle. Don't ever feel discomforted by a melody. My kind of guy. Right, well, let's listen to that. Sounds like it's gonna be upbeat, and that's what I've been gagging for, so let's listen. Well, that really was lovely. It felt very like I was a little animal waking up from my uh, winter hibernation and into, into like after my slumber, and I was sort of looking around at all these daffodils and things imagine um so yeah that was that i enjoyed it a lot le printemps by darius milhound well done howd well done uh next up is the question uh your favorite fictional character suddenly appears at your front door what book would you share to acquaint them in this new world they find themselves in well i guess if i was to acquaint them with my sort of world and books that represent my how I see the world, I think I'd firstly go for This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I work for the NHS and that's a definite representation of the state of the NHS both then and now. The Heartstopper series because I think it encapsulates young love and friendship groups so perfectly, so I'd go for that. And then I feel like I use this book literally every single week but Bridget Jones's diary because I really feel like that sort of held up with what the dating scene's like and what it's like to be a woman in your 30s um, just trying to sort of get by every day. So I'd pick it, I'd say, there we go. My favourite fictional character of whom is probably Bridget Jones. No, I don't know. It might be Bridget Jones's mum. There we go. Right, and then let's end on a poem for every spring day. And like I said, it's the 8th of, 8th of April. So we've either got Home from Home Thoughts from Abroad by Robert Browning or Awakening by Tony Mitten. Should we go for Awakening? Because I just mentioned that piece of music made me feel like a little dormouse awakening after a winter slumber. So it says here, the poet has written this illuminating paragraph about his poem. Here we go. Hearing straight from the, the, um, the poet who is Tony Mitten. This is Awakening. The story has been passed down that the Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, had ach achieved a sudden and powerful experience of understanding after many years of study and practice. Exhausted by the efforts he had made to get to grips with the meaning of his life, he gave up and sat down in meditation under the Bodhi tree, vowing not to get up until some answer presented itself to him. After sitting all night in meditation, he caught sight of the morning star rising. The clarity and power of the moment that followed is sometimes called his enlightenment or awakening. In spite of his already great learning wisdom all he could say in response to this experience was what is this so a different kind of awakening but a very enjoyable one to read about the buddha sat silently under a tree he sat and he waited determinedly 
He sat like a statue and scarcely stirred. Out of his lips never came a word. He sat through the hours of an orient night and just at the edges of opening light. Up in the heaven, so sharp and so far, glimmered the spark of awakening star. Sitting in stillness, the sight that he saw pierced him through to the innermost core. And all he could say in his moment of bliss was simply and purely, what is this? Thank you for joining me for another Friday reading vlog. Hope you liked all the baking. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon for another one. Bye!